And welcome back to Hannity. Now, despite ruthless efforts by the administration to cover up the fast and furious gun running scandal, which put an estimated 2,000 guns in the hands of murderers and kidnappers and criminals and drug dealers, and also resulted in the death of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, my next guest, former ATF agent John Dotson, is now exposing the reality behind this massive cover up. And in his brand new book, The Unarmed Truth My Fight to Blow the Whistle and Expose Fast and Furious, Dotson reveals the story that the Obama White House does not want you to know. Here with a sneak peek, the man himself, former ATF agent John Dotson. How are you, sir? Good hey, to see you. I'm fine. Thank, Thank you sir. for being here. Thank um, you. This is a story that I can't believe didn't resonate more with the American people. Our government gave guns, tell me where I'm wrong, to drug dealers, kidnappers, gangs, murderers, and thugs. Is that true? Uh, that's absolutely correct, sir. It's, uh, you know, the most violent criminal organizations that our hemisphere has ever seen. And, um, you know, we facilitated fire, the trafficking of at least 2,500 firearms, AK variant rifles, um, to these organizations. Uh, in, yeah. And we could, we could have put tracking systems on them, couldn't we? Well, we could have done a lot, sir. We could have interdicted the firearms, for one thing. We could have uh, gone along with the gun dealers or the FFLs, who in the beginning didn't want to make these sales until after they were... Uh, obligated to do so by our agency. So we could have stopped it from the very beginning. We didn't have to allow any of them to be trapped. All right, so you're an agent in, in the field office of what was it, out in uh, Phoenix, and, yes, and this is where all this happened. So walk us through everything that you know. Uh, well, uh, when I first arrived in Phoenix in December of 2009, I got briefed into the case, which would later be named Fast and Furious. Um, shortly thereafter, the first time we went operational out in the field, I started, I recognized what I knew to be gun walking. And um, you know, the walking of a firearm is essentially when it should have been or could have been in law enforcement custody, but it wasn't. The decision is made to let it go. So immediately I started questioning the strategy and the, um, the operation, and that got me nowhere with my chain of command, with my supervisors, with my own agency. And I just had this, me and several other agents just had to sit and watch this as it progressed and progressed. And, you know, 200 rifles became 400, became eight, and ultimately it was... Uh, almost 2,500 by the time I left the group in October of 2010. So, and it resulted in the death, not only of Brian Terry, but many other people as well. These guns were used to kill people both in the United States and in Mexico, correct? That's correct, yes, sir. These guns were used on both sides of the border, in crimes on both sides of the border. And an important uh, thing to note is that the firearms are recovered at the last crime that they're used in. No one can ever tell you how many crimes they've, they've been used in um, or, or used to... Up to that point. Up to that point, yes, sir. All right, so you want to reveal this. You want to tell people, hey, wait a minute, Brian Terry didn't need to die. We gave the people that killed him the weapons that killed him. Right. How did that go over? Uh, not very well at all, sir. The, uh, they obviously did not want me to blow the whistle. Um, it was very embarrassing for my agency and for the administration. And um, they did everything they could in the beginning to stop it, um, to discredit me, to uh, um, retaliate against me, everything they could. But what oh. happened? Well, uh, it was a long three-year period, but uh, finally it's here, and, and then I've written this. They tried to stop that from coming out. They obviously don't want it. They don't want the American people, like, like we were talking earlier, to know everything that's involved, to actually see it all in a sequential order written down about how... It's ugly. I mean, it's horrible, yes, sir. I mean, it's completely horrible. And I don't think they want anybody to be able to make those connections. And plus, um, as your segment earlier was talking about the executive branch going outside of control, um, you know, the book does a lot to empower people, or I think so, and that's one of my intentions with it, is to empower those. Okay, that's what they don't want. That's what threatens them a lot. If they realize, if, as agents and, and the people underneath them realize that we do have some power, that is a significant threat to them. Um, take, like, as I watched all the other scandals unfold in this, you know, in the past couple of years, the uh, Benghazi, the IRS, everything. Same MO. It's, they lie, they just store just, it, and they get, and... And they delay long enough that yes. people say, oh, that's old news. And, and attention is diverted. You know, don't look here, look over there. And, but if, what they realize and what I realize is that if, you know, those IRS agents who are ordered to target conservative groups, if they realize, you know, I can say no, I can stand up to this ad administration or any administration, that they can't order me to do things that are illegal or unconstitutional. How did they try and get you to stop writing this book? Uh, well, at first they absolutely barred it. They said I couldn't publish it at all because it would be, it would harm around, be detrimental to our relationship with other agencies. Uh, really? And who told you that? Uh, that I ran that all the way up my chain of command to our chief counsel's office in Washington. And, um, they threatened to sue you? They threatened to put you in jail? They, well, they tried to uh, have me indicted when I first blew the whistle. And um, there have been threats of law. Indicted lawsuits. on what charge? 
Well, it's, uh, it's called the grand jury secrecy rule, a 60 violation. Oh. They tried to make the argument that what information I had released to Congress was in violation of the secrecy clause, and they even tried to uh, sub suborn perjury from an FFL in order oh, to have me indicted. Oh, it's a great story, and people need to know it because it's eye-opening. Great job. Thank uh -huh. you for being with us. Appreciate Thank you, it. Sir. Appreciate it. All right, and coming up tonight, we will...